I attempted a ton of challenges in TDS, using a wide variation of towers on a lot of different game modes, to see just how many I could win, starting with melee towers only. Surprisingly, the game actually has enough of these towers to make a full loadout, however the individual quality does vary. Early game, almost all of these towers are great, and I placed one of each to completely stomp the early zombies. Around wave 20, as the molten spawned, I upgrade each tower one by one to fully take advantage of their strength. Sledger's freezing, gladiator's piercing, warden stuns, executioner's range, and Slasher is there too. A great perk of these towers is that they are all very cheap to place, allowing me to spam them heavily moving into the late game, getting around 35 towers down. However, going for such high quantity meant I couldn't really upgrade everything. In the wave 34, two speedy bosses passed my unupgraded towers, where I had to place a gladiator in the back of the path to damage it, and another one, and another warden, letting me easily survive with 13 HP. So I focused on upgrading more of the DPS heavy gladiators, and after hitting the placement limit in wave 37, I now had an insane the mana towers. I did reach the final wave, but the molten boss wasn't taking much damage. Melee towers work great against large hordes of zombies, with their piercing and stunning, but with a single target boss who can't be stunned, their bad range becomes a huge problem. The molten boss passed 30 plus towers, only taking minor damage. So I was forced to sell and replace my towers to spam gladiators, but as the boss got further and further, I regained less and less money, eventually running out completely with only 2 towers left. With all the microwing, I did get the boss down to half its HP, but its spawning attack killed me, meaning I lost the first challenge. Next, someone dared me to beat normal mode with the towers you were meant to use. I grabbed the cheapest towers, clearly meant for beginners, to see if I could win this mode. I started poorly, leaking a zombie on the literal first waves. My strategy was to place a sniper early, which would have enough range to cover most of the map, and then just spam the other towers. This worked for the normal bosses, as a sniper could clean up easily, but didn't go quite as well for the necromancer boss. Very far along the path, repeatedly spawning zombies. A problem with my team was that all the towers were very bad. I was doing little damage, and even though this game mode is meant to be easy, things were definitely not going well. On wave 16, the slow boss spawned with 1600 health. Considering I could barely kill a normal boss with 10 times less HP, I had no chance. And as it sponged damage, a shadow boss snuck by and killed me, proving normal mode is actually hard. The next challenge was to beat fallen mode with only blue skins, to honor the mode's aesthetic and theming, and because blue is a cool color. Now, this raised a pretty big problem because, unfortunately, there are very few good towers which I could bring, since all of Accelerator, Engineer, Farm, DJ, Sledger are not blue, but by using certain skins I could achieve a workaround and actually bring a pretty solid loadout, featuring two golden towers and some good support. In game, I placed Crook Boss and Cowboy early, as they're both cheap and worked fairly well. Unfortunately, with no gold perk for Cowboy, the money production wasn't great, but Commander and Warden served as solid support while I saved for my main DPS of Gold Minigunner, or rather Blue Minigunner, which I placed in Wave 15. I killed the Fallens with two Bodyguards, taking a bit of damage, and continue placing minis. Things were looking up as I cruised through wave 25, and then the glitches spawned. I had too few minis, and wardens, and cowboys, and everything really. Using their insane speed, they killed me. So having lost multiple challenges, I decided to try one a bit more reasonable, which was to buy the plushy DJ. So I spent $50 on the toy to get a redeemable code for the skin. The plush DJ is definitely the best of the toy skins. Whereas commander and minigunner were essentially just reskins, the DJ actually gains a new song, new animation, and multiple new models make it feel very unique, especially on its max stage where it gets a huge speaker it can sit on, which is pretty iconic. So with that done, next I decided to transition into the plush skin only challenge. For the first round, I decided to use the gold perk for mini, which was a mistake, because I could not physically get enough money to place it. So I tried again with the cheaper, regular variant. This time I was barely able to place the tower after instantly skipping every wave, and it did just enough damage. With no other DPS, I had to fully rely on mini, which is not a tower you want to rely on. I placed another one as the boss spawn, but I got past each of the two towers, and I lost. The next challenge was to use only farm, which, yeah, doesn't really work. How about archer only? I mean, it's not bad. Okay, it is bad. That was impossible, but how about sniper only? Nope. Finally, I found a balanced challenge in bringing a random loadout to a random match. So RNG awarded me this team, which honestly could be a lot worse, especially for fallen mode, as everything was cheap to place, and the lack of farms didn't hurt me much. I placed sledger and then mortar early, and additionally one teammate placed a gold soldier, while the rest of my team farmed. A lot. We were lacking in the early game and that boss by, but luckily because everyone was
is very high level. We had a massive base HP of 434, easily letting us survive, until the player minigunner placed a gold minigunner, and things started going pretty well. I placed all my sledgers and slowly upgraded them, as they were the best option I had in my loadout. I also placed a medic early, and then upgraded it 15 waves later. In addition to maxing a mortar as my teammates maxed accelerators, the strong towers easily let us reach wave 40, where we killed the fallen king in about 30 seconds, actually speedrunning the challenge. So next, I had to eat ham in the lobby. This challenge requires a specific event emote, which luckily I had, completing another challenge. Then someone challenged me to spend all of my coins on basic crates. Now I have been saving these coins up for the last couple months, so naturally I bought all 35 basic crates, losing probably about 20 hours worth of grinding. But on the bright side, I could get some great skins, like the Red Soldier, which I already had anyways. These challenges were all very difficult, and now I have to grind 35k more coins for a gold crate, so please consider subscribing. It's free, and only takes a second. All these challenges were suggested by my group, so thanks to everyone for their great ideas. Subscribe. Bye.